Good morning from the garden. It's a beautiful Sunday as you can see and I'm so happy that I have some hours to spend on our plot today. But since we are nearing the end of March I also thought that it was about time that I share my gardening goals for 2019 with you. In 2018 I was rather ambitious and I had a total of 18 goals. At the beginning of the season we, we filmed a video about what the goals were and then at the beginning of this year we filmed a little recap and I will link both of those videos in the description box if you would like to go back and see what my goals were last year. Uh, for this year I'm going a bit, I'm, I'm being a bit uh, less ambitious and nicer to myself uh, and I'm only going to do nine goals. Last year one of my goals was tomato related. I did a little trial of uh, different cherry tomato varieties in our greenhouse and this year too I have two tomato related goals but they're a bit different. I will be continuing my trial in the greenhouse but I also have two other goals where tomatoes are concerned. I want to try growing new varieties outside and because we live in quite a rainy climate, growing tomatoes outside is challenging. They often, often succumb to blight, that's the biggest problem here. So I did a little um, search around the internet and looked for varieties that are resistant or at least uh, very tolerant of blight. And I got five here that I want to try growing. So they're called Mountain Magic, which is supposed to be one of the most uh, blight resistant varieties on the market. Jasper, Honeymoon, Dam Damsel and Prima Bella. And I also have another one which is um, seed, which are seeds that were passed uh, to me by a fellow gardener. So I will include those as well. Um, the sad thing is that most of these varieties are hybrid varieties so I won't be able to save my seeds. But since we really love tomatoes and I would like to be able to grow more of them outside, um, I am opting for hybrid seeds in this case. So if you have other varieties that you have good um, experience with, please let me know in the comments. Goal number two, also tomato related, I want to try grafting tomatoes. Uh, because you can buy seeds for a rootstock um, and then a variety that you can graft on it. You can't gra graft just any variety on, on the rootstock. But, so I had to get a specific one. This one is called Berry and it's also a hybrid. And this is the, this is the rootstock that I will be grafting on. I have already sown both of those. So I'm really um, curious about how, how this will go because the rootstock is supposed to give the plants a much better disease resistance. Um, so again, something that I'm very interested in. My next goal is also related to disease resistance, but it's this time um, disease resistance against club root in brassicas. This is my brassica bed, which I planted uh, in early fall last year or summer last year. We have winter broccoli here, perennial broccoli and kale. And the problem we have on our sandy soil uh, with growing brassicas is club root, which is a fungus that's in the present in the soil and it causes the, I don't know whether you can see it well, it causes the roots of the plants to swell and makes it difficult for them to absorb water. And some uh, kinds of brassicas are much more susceptible, for example, uh, kohlrabi is very difficult to grow if you have club root present in the soil. Um, Kale is, is much less bothered by it, but for example cauliflower is also difficult to grow. And last year I grew a variety of cauliflower which is called Clapton uh, and it has a very good disease resistance or club root resistance and it has done really well for us. It was really um, interesting to see it in comparison to the white cabbage that we are growing next to it and it was, was very much bothered by the club root. So um, I went looking for some more club root resistance vi varieties to grow this year and I found this one which is a red winter cabbage called Lodero and white cabbage which is called Kilaton. So I'll be growing uh, those three this year. My goal number four is to introduce hollyhocks to the garden. Uh, if you don't know them, they're a very tall plant with beautiful edible flowers and different colors. 
And for me, it's a, it's a flower that has a nostalgic value because my grandma always had them in her garden. And I really don't know how it's possible that I don't, I'm not growing them yet. So I want to correct this this year. I want to sow some and then plant them uh, somewhere around my, uh, not in the vegetable garden, or not in the kitchen, kitchen garden part of our plot, but uh, around somewhere around our fruit trees in the food forest part of the garden. And I think once I introduce them, they should, the plant should be able to sow so and stay present in the garden. My goal number five, uh, it has to do with growing in the greenhouse in the winter. And um, we have done several videos about what we grew in the greenhouse, but one of the plants that has done really well and um, that we really enjoy eating at this time of the year uh, are, is lettuce. And the lettuce, most of the lettuce that we have here now is Clapton, which is uh, Claremont, sorry, Claremont, which is not particularly well suited to winter growing, even so it has done really well. But this year um, uh, I want to do a little trial of different um, hardy lettuces that I want to try growing in the greenhouse. My goal number six is to grow sweet potatoes outside. In the past two years we grew them in the greenhouse with a fairly good success but um, last September we visited a Belgian grower who's called uh, Dimitri Jacobs and he's um, selecting varieties for growing outside in cool climate and according to him there really are many good varieties he's even bred breeding new varieties and when we were there he happened to be looking for a name for one of his new varieties and he said he would name it after me Viera which is really sweet and kind of a dream come true for a gardener. So I asked him whether we would, he would send me some of the plants and I want to trial them outside in our garden. My goal number seven is to try growing thyme more successfully. Um, I have planted it several times in, uh, not, not just in this garden, but also in our home garden, but it's a herb that's not, um, it's not fully hardy. Uh, it has, it needs, specific microclimate to do successfully and needs good drainage. This is uh, our only plant in this garden, but it is a herb that I love and I really want to be able to use it more in my cooking. So I want to uh, find a good spot for it and plant more, not just uh, the single bush. My goal number eight is to expand the kitchen garden by adding a few new beds. Uh, at this point we have 12 large raised beds and four small ones, but there are always more things that I want to grow that I can fit into my beds. So we decided to expand the garden and add probably four new beds here in front of the uh, greenhouse. This part of the garden was what I called my permaculture cottage garden. It was a mix of edibles, perennial and annual, self-sowing annuals and lots of flowers. It was really beautiful. It's getting a little wild and overrun by things like um, um, wild strawberries and mint. So uh, we started clearing this space by replanting uh, the things like the gooseberries and we had uh, uh, the, one of the red fleshed apples here um, rhubarb here I think so these are the things that we have already removed so at this point it's a big mess uh, but we will clear the area and then we plan to add uh, probably four new beds. My last goal number nine is to grow an Italian polyculture in one of my raised beds. Um, I like to design um, fun polyculture or have fun with designing polyculture centered around a specific country and its cuisine and I have not done Italy yet so uh, we obviously we love Italian cooking so I want to grow some ingredients for Italian recipes in one of my beds uh, at this point I'm thinking stuff like borlotti beans, uh, Roma tomatoes, basil, Tuscan kale, flat leaf parsley, maybe chard um, if I have any Italian viewers, please chime in and let me know what I absolutely should be growing in my Italian polyculture. So these were my nine goals, <laughs> nine goals for 2019. Uh, we'll keep you posted during the growing season on how we're, how we're doing. Uh, if you set any gardening goals, please let me know in the comments. I'm really curious what challenges other gardeners are setting for themselves. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Happy gardening!